Hi, I'm John Morrison, and you're watching the Money in the Bank Show. Now go, feel the power of money. Farniente, Four Horsemen Films, and Farniente have tag teamed <laughs> for the Money, Money in the Bank, Bank Show. Show. I'm Andre Gordon, at Directed by Dre. I'm John Roca, at The Roca Says. And this is our WrestleMania special show. WrestleMania! And we have a guest here. Woo! A very special guest. The one and only. I'm John Morrison, at The Real Morrison. Yeah. Is that what, is that what we do here? That's what we yeah. do. That's what we're doing. We introduce ourselves and give our Twitter handles. I like this. Just in case, All right. we're retweeting this show right now. <laughs> All right, guys. So, John, we just want to start out and just start at the beginning of your life, you know, like as far as uh, wrestling goes. What even got you into wrestling? What What did you decide, like, okay, you know what? I want to be a wrestler. What made that happen? Yeah. You know, when, um, when, I, when I was a kid, I think most kids... Are, are young, you get into wrestling, and I, I was a huge fan of Hulk Hogan growing up. He was yeah. the first person that caught my eye, to be honest. Hulk Hogan, Ultimate Warrior, and um, I, I used to watch wrestling every Saturday with my buddies, yeah. and then after wrestling, we'd go out in the driveway or somebody's backyard and put each other in Boston Crabs and <laughs> have, our, have our own Royal Rumbles. And um, I, I wanted to be a wrestler at that time. You know, when, yeah. I, was, when I was seven years old, eight years old, um, nine, ten years old, I was, I was wrestling with my friends. We were watching like SummerSlam, Mania, Survivor Series, the big four, That's going great. over to each other's houses, watching it all the time. And um, I, I think at that age, knew like in my mind 100% that I wanted to be a wrestler. And um, I also, at that age, wanted to be Superman. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then you get a little bit older and you, you realize, um, I, I, I didn't think of it as a, as a legitimate career path. Yeah. I got into I got into high school. I, I wrestled in high school because I was a fan of professional wrestling, and um, I, I stopped thinking about being a pro wrestler. I thought of it more as a childhood dream, something that I was a huge fan yeah, of as a yeah, kid. Yeah. And then I, I got into high school and I, I started, you know, playing sports, getting into girls, and thinking that um, <laughs> people graduate from high school and they go to college and then they have a career. And that's that's what my mindset was. And then eventually, when I was in college, I'd been training for a, a career as a stunt guy, an action actor, kind oh, of like, yeah. like Jackie Chan, who's right, a huge right, right. hero of mine. You and Jackie look alike. Very, very similar, <laughs> right? <laughs> Can't say anything ever bad about Jackie Chan. No. That man would kill everybody in this room with his true. finger. That's true. Um, but uh, he, uh, he, he had a big influence on me, just, just like, uh, like, like Hogan and Shawn Michaels and Macho Man, and yeah. um, I, that's what I wanted to do. And when I saw that show, Tough Enough, on MTV, yeah. I, like, it just kind of clicked for me. Everything, all of a sudden, I was like, oh, wait a minute. I've been training for this specifically. Right. All the performance, all the movement, the acting classes I've been taking, like the gymnastics, the martial arts, the jiu-jitsu, the boxing. It's pretty much all wrapped up into this thing that I loved when I was a kid, professional wrestling. Right. And that's when I officially set my sights on getting into Tough Enough. And whether I was on that show or not, I was going to train to be a pro wrestler. Well, you bring up you bring up a good point because Tough Enough Three, that's the one you want because you initially applied for Tough Enough Two but didn't get in. Right. And then you got into Tough Enough Three and then went all the way and actually won. So what was it like for you to actually have everything culminate for you to win? And then you know they got you into the inside track of the contract, go to Ohio Valley Wrestling. What was that like for you, like to have that dream come true now? Um, at that time, pretty baller. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, it was right. yeah, it was uh, you know it was amazing in between. Um, it, it worked out perfectly. Like not getting into Tough Enough Two, I think, was the best thing that could have happened to me. Made you work like, harder. Yeah, like I, 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 uh, I applied for Tough Enough Two. Um, in between, I, uh, I started training at a place in Sacramento called Supreme Pro Wrestling. Oh yeah. And um, I, I learned, uh, I learned a lot about just like the business and the passion that those people had, like uh, the Big Ugly, El Flaco Loco, Kryptonite, you know, right. Wicked, oh, Jesus right. Cruz, all those, all those guys in Sacramento that are like. Training, like, to, to train there, you'd have to set up the ring every day and break the ring down every day. I wow. remember. And they would, and they would wow. do that. Like, we would, and I would do it, too. We, we'd show up. We'd set the ring up in this, in this theater, the Colonial Theater in Sacramento. Right. We'd set the ring up. It took an hour. We'd practice for two hours. We'd take the ring down and, and put it back behind the theater and store it. Wow. And Paid his dues, people. 
paid his right. dues. Well. <laughs> <laughs> rented That's his right. dues. Rented his dues. Paid, paid dues for, for a little bit. But right. it, it, like, it definitely, doing, doing that, having that experience, I think, let me get an inside look at like how passionate these people are who are independent wrestlers, who are wrestling fans, right. and the type of uh, lives that people... Like like Edgy said, you had on the show before. Yeah. yeah. Like like what he had to go through, and Christian, and a lot of the guys. I mean, Stone Cold Steve Austin, all all these guys that have been lifelong fans of wrestling. And you know what we're gonna do when we come back? We're gonna talk about what it was like to get the call, the phone call yeah. that you're going to the WWE. We'll be back after this. We are back on the Money in the Bank show with John Morrison. And we are going to talk about what it was like when the phone rang. And hey, you're coming up to the big show. You're coming up to the dance. Tell us about that. What was that moment like? The, uh, the phone call specifically from, uh, from when I was in Louisville in Ohio Valley Wrestling to get, uh, to get basically let known that we were all going up to, uh, to the big show. Yeah. Um, right, it was, it was I, had, I had a couple. Like uh, the first, yeah. the first time I went up to the big show, I was uh, Eric Bischoff's apprentice. That's right, Johnny Nitro. That's right, that's right. And um, that uh, that happened at a, at a TV taping. I was I was at a TV taping in um, I think it was Columbus, and all the, the whole Ohio Valley Wrestling roster was there. And like we always went to the TV tapings that were close to Louisville. So Cincinnati, Columbus, Cleveland, even though Cleveland's like five hours. But uh, at this at this specific TV taping, um, I had uh, been pulled into John Laurinaitis's office and um, he said yeah. Mr. John Laurinaitis said hey kid uh, we think we might have something for you we're going to start bringing you to the TVs and um, awesome. I was I was super excited I didn't I didn't know what like uh, what he meant and when he explained what the, the character they had in mind for me was going to be I was not as excited <laughs> I remember <laughs> to, to be honest because I, I had my, my sights set on wrestling I wanted to be a wrestler I didn't want to be an on-screen like manager type talking only character at the time. Right. So I was I was excited regardless, but um, secretly deep down I was like, ah, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you've done all that training, all that all that wrestling training, and then all the stuff you were working on, you wanted that to be out on in front. Right. Yeah. And and now like in retrospect, like what an opportunity that is yeah. to to be an on-screen character, to yes. be able to talk and develop your personality. Yeah. At the time, I didn't really appreciate that. And and I think what what ended up happening again worked out for the best. I, I had a run for about six months as Johnny Nitro. Um, I <laughs> I had a, I had one match specifically with Chris Jericho. Me and uh, me and Eugene versus Jericho and, and Garrison Cade, <laughs> and I uh, I was wearing my my business pants like my slacks and my slippery shoes, and pretty much all I had to do the whole match was like make a save, and um, <laughs> Jericho was was covering uh, Eugene, and all I had to do was run in and save. Right. And um, I I slipped and like split Jericho open, like I just caught him with my my forearm, oh. like right on the, the corner of his eye. He ended up getting like seven stitches. <laughs> was he cool with it? Not really. <laughs> yeah, not really. Like, I wouldn't be either. He, he was, was uh, he was, he was super pissed actually. <laughs> and I don't blame him, you know? Right, like, right. He's like this kid, all he has to do is make a save and he busts you open. <laughs> oh man, he, we laugh about it now though. He's totally fine with it. It was, it was, it was an honest mistake, a stupid yeah. mistake. Right. But, um, <laughs> But those things happen in the ring, right? And they do. Professional, I mean, like newbie or uh, experienced professional, that happens in the ring. They do. And, and, and if I was in his position and, like, uh, somebody split me open and I needed seven stitches, yeah. I, would, I would be pretty pissed, too. Yeah, right. Um, it, was, it was a fluke accident. And uh, I think that, like, uh, that incident combined with, like, just, like, me really wanting to be a wrestler yeah. led to me getting sent back down to OVW. And, and repackaged, which was for the best, because yeah. that's when we developed Eminem. Me, right. Joey Mercury, and Molina s started doing Eminem on OVW Remember TV. Eminem, yeah, and it was. And, and you guys have an amazing legacy with that because your first match when you came back up, you won the tag team championships, right? Is that correct? The yeah, exactly. Team? So the first match coming that, back up. That call was the call that felt like yeah. the call that I think right. you're you're talking yeah. about, like yeah, the talk about that. yeah, like the butterflies and like the excitement, and you're finally like all this hard work that we've done for these past like three years of developmental is coming to fruition. Right. That, that call, because that was the, the group that we developed, the, the three of us together. Right. We filmed vignettes and they aired on like Louisville TV that I filmed and edited with my, with my camera. Wow. And, I love uh, that, came I up, love that. And a lot of people said that that was a big compliment we got, that uh, we went the extra mile. And um, they, they tried to change our, our faction up because Joey didn't have a contract at the time. And they, they asked if we wanted to go up, me, Molina, and, and like 
somebody else or a couple of different people, right. and we kept saying no, it has to be Joey, and um, and ultimately it was it was the right decision because yeah. Joey just his his mind was uh, he's he's a genius at, at wrestling psychology, yeah, and so it was pretty cool to have him be a mentor type, but also a cool like friend type guy right, because right, right. a lot of times mentors are a little bit douchey <laughs> and, uh, Joey was awesome and we we're the same age so riding together we had a lot in common and it felt like a true like click like a true team right well here's what we're gonna do I'm gonna send John and John down to stop that vacuum cleaner right around right. <laughs> and then we're gonna get back with our next segment on the money in the bank show Welcome back to the Money in the Bank show and our special guest, John Morrison, a.k.a. Johnny Nitro. We've got him here on the show. We want to move on. Now, Eminem was an awesome tag team, but they broke up eventually, and you went on an IC title run with Molina as your manager. Can you talk about that? At the time, it was, it was pretty awesome to have an on-screen and off-screen relationship with, with Molina. Right. And, okay. um, yeah. we, uh, after Eminem split up... Um, Joey had some some personal demons he had to deal with, brother. And um, I, I ended up doing a singles run with Molina. We had some um, had some really good feuds with uh, with Jeff Hardy. Right. And that yeah. was uh, in that time. The, like uh, the first time I had a ladder match was versus Jeff on an episode of Monday Night Raw. Oh, and, that's um, right. Yeah. It was, Those ladder uh, matches, man, were awesome. <laughs> totally. And and it was one of the one of the things that I remember thinking at the time. Like every once in a while, you have one of those moments right before you walk out. Where you're like, oh, holy shit. We're about to have a yeah. ladder match with yeah. Jeff Hardy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, so that that whole run was was amazing, and um, I feel like I really grew a lot as a as a performer having the singles run. Right. And um, I say this is true a lot of times when you're when you're in a tag team, all you want to do is be a singles competitor. <laughs> and, and then when you're a singles competitor, right. you start thinking about like all the all the tag team stuff. Yeah, right. yeah, right. That you like, you could be doing. And speaking of that, you you moved into the next tag team, which was with the Miz, right? And that right. was this is when I became a mad fan of John Morrison. I would tell you, this whole thing with you and The Miz yeah. made me wish I had hair to have that slow blowing hair. <laughs> thing, I tried growing it out when I walk out of the shower, but it just didn't happen. Tell us about that tag yeah. team and that, that whole well, dynamic. Rocky, Rocky doesn't have hair and he has it for Hercules, right? That's yeah, right. He's probably <laughs> I'll call hit him up his costume hey, department. The brothers. Rock, the thing <laughs> works the Rock, will you come on the show next? I'll call you, Rock. That's we'll right. Talk. Oh, my God. We'll, we'll get him up here, yeah. That's yeah. Dwayne Johnson. He's not busy. Yeah, <laughs> He's got 20 minutes. So, uh, yeah. so me and uh, yeah, me and the Miz ended up being, I think, like a like a perfect tag team because I, we were very similar in our, our sense of humor, and um, we could ride together and just like bust on the whole locker room. And the, a lot of the things that we thought was funny, we, we both had in common. Right, right, right. But aside from that, I think his energy is very loud and abrasive and annoying. Um, really? A lot of a lot of people think. <laughs> a lot of people think. Um, and uh, my. My energy, a lot of times, is a little bit more like soft-spoken and a little bit more of like a quiet confidence. And when you put those two together, I thought what we had was was really great chemistry. Oh, yeah. It really, it really was. And, and who who came up with pairing you guys together? Was that something you guys had like? It wasn't my idea. Into? <laughs> was it really? No, I'm just kidding. It was uh, <laughs> It was um. It was it was the office's idea. It was okay. it was um. It was something that I think both at the time both of us were floating. And when we ended up getting paired together, it was uh. It was really the best thing that could have happened for both of our careers. Yeah. Yeah. And um, we, we I, I think we made more out of that than anybody expected. And it right. really it really worked well for, for both of us. And I think that was the first time that I personally, based off the Miz, like as a, his personality, his persona, was able to really like get to the next level of, of riffing and being myself on camera. And I think yeah. the thing that did that for us the most was the dirt sheet. Yeah. 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 I'm telling that you, that, awesome. that whole angle, like, you know, I'm a very tough critic when it comes to why, I mean, we watch wrestling since we were kids, just yeah, like you were. Just like you. Right. You, you guys won me over. At first, I was like, oh, what is this? What yeah. is it? And I was like, okay, oh, oh, right. all right, I'm in. I, I dig it. So it, I'm really impressed with that whole angle and yeah. how you guys carried that out. Appreciate it, man. And the, uh, the thing with, with shows is if you watch the first episode of anything, like the first episode of Seinfeld even, it kind of sucks. Yeah, it takes, it takes some time. <laughs> yeah, right? And, and at the end of the day, I, I think we ended up doing almost 80 episodes of The Dirt Sheet, yeah. which, which means every week we would be in the car writing an episode, and every time we get to TV, we'd have to get to TV and go to pre-tapes and force... Brooklyn Brawler <laughs> to, uh, to put all of his pre-tapes work aside, basically, and um, and shoot the dirt sheet. And we usually have an hour. 
And so that was, it was just kind of added to our workload and made us think like producers and think about who we are personality wise. Right in basically not even only in the ring but in front of the camera while in a sitting conversational talk show type segment well you That's know great. speaking of producing i know that you're producing a lot right now and then you're acting what we're going to do is we're going to stop we're going to take a quick break we're going to come back and we are going to talk about what you're doing now as an actor and a producer in hollywood right on the money in the bank show we'll be back We are back on the Money in the Bank show with John Morrison. Woo! And listen, John and I, we used to watch wrestling in college at AJ Sports. Yep. Um, we'd, every pay-per-view, every show, we, we, would, sit, we would go to the shows, and yep. we would hang out, and we would check it out. And we went there for acting. So we appreciate the acting that goes into wrestling. <laughs> it's performance. It, it is. It's performance. Yeah. People don't necessarily make the connection. So I know we were talking about like, oh man, as actors, we could do wrestling. Tell us about how that's helped you now as an actor. Now you're doing on camera, now you're doing producing. How has that helped you uh, in your acting life now? Um, before, we, before we start that, I want, I want to just point one thing out that I like that you guys did. At the beginning of the Money in the Bank show, you guys hit that, it's the Money in the Bank show yeah. at the same time, which I, which I thought was really cool. And it was something that, that Miz and I did with the, uh, the greatest tag team of the 21st century. Yeah. I think anytime you hit something in unison, like it's a cool, a cool energy. It brings a cool energy to things. Yeah. yeah. And um, yeah. anyway, that's, that's, I mean, something that like, I don't know if you guys got that from wrestling or just got that from like <laughs> stuff that you like to do because it's fun. But uh, there are a lot of things that I've taken from wrestling to acting. And if you, if you think about wrestling as a live performance, you could look at it as you have to be larger than life. That's yeah. the whole point Theater of, in the of round. wrestling. Yeah. Exactly. Right. So you're you're performing for the person who's sitting in row one of Madison Square Garden, but also for the person in the nosebleeds, sitting all right. the way back. They have to be able to see your pain. They have to be able to see everything that you're doing. So everything has to be really big. Yeah. Yeah. And um, living in the moment, being being angry, being excited, being happy to win a championship, that's that's performing. That's right. acting. Right. The uh, the amount of movement and excitement that you have. Has to be uh, has to be changed certainly for on camera stuff. Right, true. When I actually when I when I first started as Johnny Nitro, Triple H used to call me Johnny Oversell <laughs> because leave it to Triple H. To, yeah, to come up with a clever nickname like right. Johnny Oversell. But um, I I and I, and I did because um, when I would when I would be excited for stuff, I would I would be really excited and really happy and like I would just be huge because I thought that's you know that's what um what you had to do to sell stuff but right. even on wwe tv they have cameras and especially now they've got hd cameras that come yeah. in and get stuff so the acting performances i would say now in current day wrestling have the ability to be a lot more subtle yeah than yeah they, than they did in the 80s i was telling john the other day one of the things i noticed when you can see the actor really making the shift i call him the actor because it's a wrestling as an actor yeah in the match that goes 10 15 minutes when they're the, the count is one count is two you can see the actors are really seasoned after that long match kicking out with just a little bit of energy like right. they had nothing left as opposed to the the wrestler who kicks out with a ton of energy but they're still really down on yeah. that two count just these little subtle nuances of when to show like okay i can barely get the arm up or i can barely make the tag or i'm really getting excited right. those things we've seen that transition in a lot of uh, wrestlers yeah. and i thought you did a really great job of progressing in that yeah uh, towards, you, that, towards your last that uh, specific run. like learning when and how much to sell is the thing I think in wrestling that takes the longest and yeah, is the most important right. because when and how much to sell depends on how, how far in the match you are and who you're wrestling against everything is a factor yeah. and the crowd factors into it too because if you're if you're if you're in a live event scenario, you might need to kick out really big. Right, right, right. It might be, it might be that moment. It might be the thing that people want to see, like, ah, yeah, right. our guy's still alive. Exactly. Let's, let's see John Morrison do a comeback. Yeah. Or whatever, whatever that moment is. Well, it's interesting that people don't, people like, people make fun of wrestling, which is something that I just, for who us, makes it makes fun it's, of wrestling. It's, yeah, no, who, who does that? Who said that? <laughs> <laughs> they don't know. Like, cleaner guy down there? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, too. Uh, but it's interesting to see, because that's the thing that you learn, right? As you get better, as you get more seasoned as a professional, you know, you're riding the crest of the wave of the audience. You're having to uh, uh, do it with the, another person in the ring. And some, a lot of these matches people don't know are improv. Some of them are sketched out, but some, but some of them are just brush stroked, 
like big brush strokes so that and the the smaller stuff is kind of come up on the fly between you guys and that's something you've got to learn as you go along and you know that's definitely something that i thought we both think you you progressed on and got amazing about you were getting shots at the chain at the strap the big strap and there's a reason for that right you were doing that really that well. brush that brush stroke metaphor i think is a great one yeah because yeah there, it's a i think the best matches have a lot of improv because yeah. there's just moments all the time that you can't plan yeah right? and and if you if you Pretend like you didn't hear something or you didn't see something. Everyone knows you missed an opportunity. <laughs> yeah, right. exactly. Like the right. crowd might not be able to articulate it, but they they know, you know. Yeah, yeah. And um, being able to capitalize that and hearing it is is just an important skill. That stuff, Rick, really clicks in, and and and, and it brings me to like taking advantage of opportunity. You know, we we have a few minutes left. I just wanted yeah. to talk about your opportunities now, what you're doing on cameras and actually tell us what it, what it, what are the next phases of life for you yeah. um, as you're pursuing mm -hmm. acting and. And producing and, and so what, what's going on with you? Since um, let's see, since I left, I've done uh, I've done five feature films now. The last hey. the last two I've been in, I was awesome. uh, I was the lead. They're all they're all fairly low budget. That's fine. Yeah, hey, uh, work is work. In uh, in August, I shot a uh, low budget rom com called Dangerous Games. Nice. In uh, I, I played uh, Rick Rainsford, who was hunted by two evil Russian dudes. Me <laughs> and a girl were, were hunted. She hated me at first because I was an egotistical uh, reality show deer hunter. But then she <laughs> fell for my charms by the end of the movie. Who wouldn't? Ooh, didn't want to ruin the movie for you. Guys. <laughs> but uh, but anyway, you should you should watch it anyway. The um, the last thing I did in February, I shot a, a Hercules movie. Oh yeah. And I played uh, I played the role of Hercules in Asylum's I Am Hercules or Legend of Hercules. The title Ooh, is going to be forthcoming, but it's wow. gonna it's gonna come out a week before the Rock's Hercules movie comes watch out. Watch out, Dwayne. Boom. Watch out. I'm gonna bring it. <laughs> and um, it's uh. It's pretty amazing when I'm thinking about what we achieved on a low budget with a group of hardworking people with the amount of time and money that we no, had. I, and I, think, I think it's going to be a really cool movie. The story, I believe, is very authentic to the original Greek myth. It's a, it's a dark and um, it's a dark and real Hercules. There's some comedic moments, but the action is real. There's a lot of pro wrestling in the action because there wasn't a lot of time for a fight choreography ahead of time. Yeah. So there were, there were days when I would show up and I was just fighting Moroccan guys that didn't speak English. <laughs> and some of them weren't even, like weren't even yeah. stunt guys, you know? It's our Friday night. Yeah. They're like, all right, John, you got to kill 40, 40 guys. Well, and good, John. <laughs> uh, as we're wrapping up the show, we're going to throw out a couple words. Uh, or uh, Word Association, yeah. you let us know what first pops in your head. Okay, right? let's do it. WCW. Nitro. John Cena. Hardworking. Hmm. Everybody says that. Hardworking. Well, you notice they didn't say talented. Yes! <laughs> That's what I've been saying. You've made his day. If you watch our show, you've just made his day. He works hard. <laughs> Come on. If you would just be honest. I knew we had a lot in common. Yeah. You know? <laughs> If he would just be like he's on Total Divas, I think he'd be great. Anyway, anyway all right. Um, your turn. Yeah, what did you... Oh, no. It's you. CM Punk. Oh. Oh. There's, there's a lot of words that come to mind when I think okay. CM Punk. I'm just okay. trying to think of, think of one. Okay. Okay. Ice cream. <laughs> Wait. Wait. Okay. I, I have a... <laughs> Explain. Oh, yes, please. <laughs> The good thing about word association is it can, it can just be a vague concept. It okay. could be because okay. he's got a tattoo of ice cream. I thought about that. Okay. It could be because he likes to eat ice cream yes. and doesn't work out as much as, as some people <laughs> want to. It could be because in wrestling, a term that he's uh, thrown around frequently is everybody likes different flavors of ice cream. And uh, he is a very specific flavor of ice cream that a lot of people love and some people don't like. Could be because he demanded those ice cream pops be brought back. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was thinking. Yeah, yes. there's a lot, of, a lot of different ice cream things going on with Brilliant. CM Punk. Love okay, it. okay. Return. Inevitable. Nice. Right, because you are a multiple time uh, IC champion, tag team champion, one time ECW champion, beat CM Punk. Uh, so you have an amazing resume. So are you trying to get back in to wrestling, what is your plan? Do you have a plan now at this point? Well, my, uh, the, the thing with wrestling for me, and it always has been, is there's, there's nothing really more fun than wrestling. Yeah. You know, I, I grew up loving it. I, I, I did it for, for 10 years, and um, I, I left because I had neck surgery and I was starting to fall apart, 
and um, I wasn't really happy with how it was being used creatively. And instead of turning into one of those those bitter guys that, that hangs out forever and just starts stewing and getting angry about everything, I wanted to leave while I was still really happy with, with my career and my, my health. And um, I, I feel like I made the right move because I, I feel better physically now than I did before I left. My, my head is clear. I'm not bitter. I love the business. I always have. I don't, I'm not jealous and yeah. bitter about like the young guys stealing my push like, <laughs> like, like some people get. And yeah. um, I, I think that um, when, when the time is right, I'm going to return. I'm, on, I'm in good terms with, uh, with, with the office and with everybody in WWE. And uh, it's, it's definitely something that I, that I miss. I miss performing. And uh, I'm yeah. going to get back eventually. I just don't know specifically when. Right. Well, folks, you heard it here. On the Money in the Bank show, it was John and John and Dre talking shop. We got the lowdown. Make sure you check out this week's episode as we move into WrestleMania 30. WrestleMania? Which I'm sure you're going to check out, or what do you think? Oh, absolutely. All right. Yeah, never miss a WrestleMania. That's right. Never miss a WrestleMania. And never miss an episode of the Money, Money in, in the Bank, Bank show. show. I love that you did it with us. Yeah. I, I heard it the first time. Yeah, see? Thanks for tuning in, guys.